Cameron Chai from azom.com and I'm speaking to Paul Fiddler from Netch Insurance and he's going to tell us about their LF8457. Thanks Cameron. Uh, this is our instrument to measure thermal diffusivity and calculate thermal conductivity of materials, for example, ceramics, glass, metals. Uh, it's useful in industries like the automotive industry, aerospace, uh, basically any, any industry where people want to know about heat transfer through a material. So thermal diffusivity is what we measure and that is used then to calculate the thermal conductivity of materials. Uh, this particular instrument can measure samples up to 1100 degrees Celsius uh, and on the low temperature side as low as negative 125 degrees Celsius. Uh, we even can extend that down to as low as negative 150 with a special detector assembly. Uh, so I'll show you now just how the samples are input into the instrument. We're, what I'm doing now is lowering the furnace and when the furnace comes down you'll see that we've got the ability to put up to three samples in place. This is just a, an example of a, let's say a, a type of sample could be a, basically a model. It could be a small disc or it could be a small square. You can input up to three different samples inside the furnace or you could run a larger sample up to, up to uh, one inch, 25 millimeters. The uh, uh, down underneath here is where you have the laser assembly. As we uh, put the samples in, Oops, uh, put the samples in and uh, close the furnace. What you'll see on top is the actual infrared detector. So the laser, the laser pulses the sample, heats the sample only a couple of degrees. We don't want to heat it with too much energy, just, uh, just a small amount. The infrared detector on the top looks at the heat signature, the heat pulse, as that heat wave propagates through the material. So what we measure in thermal diffusivity is the time response of that heat wave as it propagates through the material. That time response is then multiplied against the specific heat of the material and the thermal expansion or bulk density of the material and that's what gives us the calculation of thermal conductivity. So anyone who wants to uh, determine uh, 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 or model the, the thermal behavior of materials, engine components, aircraft, uh, Auto, uh, aircraft skins, uh, uh, basically, uh, uh, well, components like the space shuttle components is a good example where they want to know about uh, the heat transfer, how long, how much time it takes for heat to get through a material. Uh, that's what this uh, LFA instrument uh, is useful for. The, uh, uh, the LFA stands for Laser Flash Analyzer, and uh, this particular model is called the LFA 457. We've also got two other models. Uh, there's a high temperature system to 2,000 degrees called the LFA-427. And then a, a third model called the LFA-447 that's useful up to 300 degrees. That's quite often popular in the electronics industry for doing polymeric materials, for example. Uh, that unit does not use a laser. It uses what's called a xenon flash. Uh, so that's the L in that case is, uh, stands for light flash analyzer. So they use the light flash as a heating source. Uh, so that's the kind of the portfolio of laser flash instruments that we have. I think now there's probably, uh, uh, it's probably one of our most popular instruments now worldwide. And I think Netch is regarded as, as maybe the premier supplier of laser flash instruments in the world. Approximately how long does it take to take a measurement using one of these devices for? Uh, the actual measurement is, is uh, time is just seconds. So you might have uh, a few minutes to come to equilibrium as you, as you set the temperature inside the furnace to measure the thermal diffusivity, maybe you've got uh, 10 minutes or so to come to a thermal equilibrium in the sample, but the actual flash measurement itself is, is milliseconds. So it's a very fast technique, it's non-destructive, uh, sample preparation is relatively easy, and you get a very nice representative sample that you can use to measure the thermal diffusivity. Alright Paul, thanks for telling us about the LFA 457, and if anybody wants any more information they go to your website presumably? Yes, sir, that's right. We have, uh, uh, in, uh, uh, for, for worldwide, it's uh, www.netch.com. And uh, in the United States, we have a website that's e-thermal.com, e-thermal.com. Uh, so that's uh, for the U.S. audience. All right, Paul, thanks very much for your time. Thank you.